Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And um, the message this evening, friends, is a very somber message. Uh, and it's by no means meant to create panic, fear, anything like that. But if anything, what my desire is, is that uh, in some way I might be able to encourage um, encourage us for the days that we are going to be facing ahead as humanity, uh, and not just what the image you see on your screen right now. I mean, we're dealing with multiple issues that are going on in the world that, as you can see by some of the clips that I'm sharing with you on the screen, and uh, the catastrophic earthquakes, the volcanoes, um, we can look at the wars, and if you just look at, you know, even the uh, the map for earthquakes and stuff, you know, it, it's just um, it's just horrendous the things that are happening uh, all over the planet. And I think by now, regardless of critics and things they say, well, you said this last year, whatever the case may be. I think people are starting to realize we definitely have some issues going on on this planet like at no other time in history. Um, and it's only going to get worse. Uh, it's not going to get better. Uh, the, today I spent about three hours on a meeting discussing the events that are coming our way. Uh, I've been hesitant on speaking about a lot of these things for the simple reason is uh, as it was told to me today, not really sure why the delay, but things are going to get much worse uh, as far as all kinds of climatic issues. We're already starting to see them. And, uh, um, you know, and many of these issues are orchestrated. As you're going to find out today, I'm going to speak about some of the things that are planned. And... Yet at the same time, some of these issues we might say are natural or certainly the fallen angels are helping to instigate them, whatever the case may be. Um, but towards the end of this year, we're going to get more of a taste of what's going to come in 2022. Uh, and of course, the subsequent years thereafter. As I, as I was told initially uh, a couple of weeks ago, 2029 will kind of be the climactic year of these events, all these different global changes, the anomalies that will happen, uh, the rocks that will hit the earth, the earthquakes, the volcanoes, the underwater volcanoes, uh, and, and things of that nature there. But one thing that was said to me is that there's, we're not expected to see a lot of survivors from the events that are coming. And I felt that what we should really take inventory on is Christ in our own lives. And all these things, we should not be perplexed by it. Jesus said in Matthew 24, take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. So we're going to see these antichrist figures come on the scene. He also said, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places. He said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So all the calamities that's coming upon the earth is not anything that we shouldn't already expect. I apologize for the rain on the roof here. Uh, we're still working on trying to get a little canopy put over the office here so we don't have all this noise when it rains. But the situation is not looking very good. And I wanted to read to you from my notes that I take on some things that have been said to me. I actually released a video over on Patreon, a disclosure video that I go into more detail about an event that happened some years ago that you might be interested in, but it's not critical information. 
but this is more critical. And even though it is part of disclosure, I felt like that you needed to know this as well. I was told that China wants to use a nuclear path when dealing with this asteroid. You gotta see how loud this rain is, it's getting very loud outside. Yeah, it seems like we can probably get through it. Anyway, as I've said to you guys before, China has been working with the United States to try to chip away, break up this asteroid that's to impact the subsuduction zone off the coast of California in the Pacific Ocean. And they've been very unsuccessful in doing so, so they have wanted to take a nuclear path. But recently they were told by the ETs, or fallen angels, they are against, uh, that are against nuclear weapons, but they were told, uh, the Chinese were told to stand down when it comes to using nuclear weapons. And China's already got their own issues in their own country, a lot of things that are not being reported, floodings and things of that nature. And of course their infrastructure was so rapidly built that their nuclear facilities, their dams, were never built quite to the strength that we built here in the United States. And there is a lot of expectation that a lot of that is going to collapse because of all these violent earth changes that we're about to be facing. But I was told that the, at the end of November is the rough time frame when they're anticipating that we could be impacted by this rock that's coming in. But that they are continually working on ways to break it up or divert it, knock it off course. So it's not 100% that it will happen. And I want to make sure that I'm clear in that. It's not definitive at all that it will take place. But one thing that I was told, though, is that that's how our year is going to end up if they're not able to divert it. But going into next year, even though these rocks will not be as big, they'll be much smaller, between that, between the plasma storms that we will begin to experience here in the end of the year, going into next year, the earthquakes, the volcanoes, the changes that will be happening, the, the, the solar reactions and the earth reacting to it, and the subsequent years thereafter, they're not expecting a lot of survivors. Uh, we might refer back even to the uh, Deagle report, and I forget which year it was, but in the Deagle report, it showed a large loss of life in the United States. I actually believe that was in 2021 uh, of the Deagle report. And let me just see if I can just pull that up. That would be, of course, from what I understand, 2021 will not really be the, uh, the year, but I can certainly see, let's see, well, they talk about the war population for 2025, but anyway, uh, let me just see if this gives us anything in the, in the Deagle report here. It's an online military capabilities of the world, nation, states, and recently released shocking five-year forecast. They predicted the 70% reduction in the size of the United States population. That is a bold prediction. What are, what are your thoughts on this? Somebody was asking a question, and I've just happened to click on something really quick. Um, Let's go to Deagle's website. That's really what I want. I'm glad they put that link in there. Um, let's see here if I can find. What we need is the population. Uh, oh, gosh. That just gives financial. I'm not really interested in the financial aspect. Let me go back to the website to see what they're saying here. They predicted that about 70% of the U.S. population, about the same percentage in Europe, is going to disappear by 2025. It's hard to believe that anybody in their position would make a forecast like that. There's no logical business reason for it, especially since it was done uh, before the COVID hysteria gripped the world. It stretches the reader's 
credulity could have possibly happened. It would be the biggest thing in the world history. And does it have a basis in reality, or is it just some bizarre trolling exercise? I'm not sure. Well, I, I don't know if it's going to be anywhere near that high. I wouldn't think so. But I can tell you that people that I know in Washington, they are anticipating, because of all these major issues coming, that there's not going to be a lot of survivors at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, I just, I want people to realize we have one hope and our hope is in Jesus Christ. And without him, there is no hope. You know, regardless of what happens to us on this earth, makes no difference. If we have anchored our souls in Jesus Christ, that is all that really matters. And I think now more than ever, the love that we need to have for one another and the love that we have for, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is what should be at the forefront of everything. Um, I will share with you as well that I know that, or at least from what was shared with me, is that there's also man-made events that will trigger some of these things as well. The U.S. intel is known for about five years that China and Russia have been uh, collaborating on actually detonating a device that would cause either a volcano or a massive earthquake that would sink the Canary Islands. That's a real threat that they've anticipated, which of course, as anyone knows, has ever looked at the Canary Islands going beneath the sea, would basically wipe out our entire uh, eastern seaboard uh, because of the tsunamis that it would create. And the other, the other issue there was, uh, I was told too that uh, Japan is what they say is on the bye-bye list. Uh, they've known for about a decade that Japan is not really anticipated to survive the seismic activity that they believe will begin at the end of this year. Uh, not meaning that it will go down at the end of this year, it's not what they're talking about. But we're going to see, as I was told, earthquakes that will easily begin to go up to 8.0 and higher uh, by the end of the year. Um, also, while we were discussing these things, and I'll just share this with you, Pearl Harbor was something that we had advanced warning on. Uh, we were using Tesla's technology back in those days as well. So the United States did know full well. And as I was told, it was an attack because of money. It's all about the money. Um, I was explained that if you ever go to the CAC room in the Pentagon, which is the Crisis Analysis Center, he says, much like if you look at the, the movie, The War Games, let me see, I think I actually put that up here somewhere too, an image for you just so you could see that. Um, but he said, if, there it is right there. He said, if you go, if you see that movie there, he says, it's very similar to what it looks like uh, in the Crisis Analysis Center in the Pentagon. And he said, when you go in there, he said, every submarine, every ship that our enemies have is all plotted on a big screen. And then there's other screens that deal with certain things on there. He said, we, just like the Russians, know where everything is. And he said, we had this capability even back during... Uh, World War II. Uh, we were using the technology that Tesla had invented back in the 20s. And he said, so theoretically, he said, there is no threat theoretically, because we always know where everybody's at. And of course, we can attack, destroy what they have, and vice versa, they could attack and destroy what we have. He said, but everything is scripted. That's what we're dealing with. Everything is actually scripted, what's going on. And so, these are some of the things that I wanted to be able to share with you. Um, over on Patreon, I'll probably do a disclosure. Uh, I might actually do it here, but uh, but I'm also going to be doing a disclosure on the Taliban 
Afghanistan and what's really going on there. Uh, who orchestrated the Taliban getting their military equipment when it was done? It was actually done during the Obama administration. Uh, and I am going to be releasing over on Patreon uh, information about Obama coming back into power uh, under President Biden. Uh, some things that's been disclosed to me that uh, uh, is scenarios that may actually happen, not saying that it will. And no, he would not come back as president of the United States, but he is actively participating in the current administration. And uh, there are those that are advisors to that administration that see that he may very well be coming back in power especially when it comes to dealing with the Taliban and look like the savior of the world when it comes to Afghanistan and the Taliban. At any rate, I wanted to just share these things with you. And like I said, I, I don't do this to create fear. I do this because I love you guys. I care about you. And I want to make sure that I can inform you the best that I know how. Uh, and also, let me just say, one thing in our discussions that we had this morning, there is no safe place on this planet with the events that are coming. Uh, so quite frankly, you know, unless I knew, for example, I knew I was right in the path of a tidal wave, you know, I, I would probably want to move because I wouldn't want to drown in a tidal wave. But, uh, but there's all kinds of scenarios. No matter where you go on this planet, there's going to be a scenario. There's, there's, there's underground bunkers will not work. They discovered that that back in the '80s when they built them, they found out in the late '90s they're not going to work. So the elite are all in a panic. Uh, they thought about building underground bunkers in the oceans, only to find out that when the volcanoes, so many of them will be erupting, that the water will begin to boil. They can't survive there. But I was told as long as the friend that I have that's in Washington, who's been there for decades, he said to me that watching the way the politicians and the elite act, you know that they have made agreements with the ETs, uh, the fallen angels, in order to escape out of here. He said, and they're planning on doing a quote unquote fake rapture. He said, but could you really trust them in the first place? He said, I wouldn't trust them. But that's why he said they are willing to sell you out. These politicians are willing to sell out the American people and do the bidding of these fallen angels, including those things that they're making up this, you know, this big thing going on in the world right now and putting something in your body that can, can totally take control of you, they are willing to agree to any experiment to be done on humanity, including killing you, to save their own skin. I'm going to break a lot of this down in disclosures that I'll do over on Patreon because uh, I know some of this stuff is like, mind-boggling for people that are listening right now. And like I said, three hours, I was in a meeting today, quite, quite lengthy. But the gist of these things I wanted to share with you here, because to me, they're critical. They're critical because we need to pray like we've never prayed before. We need our relationship with Jesus Christ like we've never had it before. And that's what I wanted to encourage you on and to know that he is our only hope and stay. Um, and we do the best we can as far as our preparations going forward, making sure you have food and water for your family, uh, because those things will become hard to come by. Uh, I did ask about the food crisis, the shortages. I said, I assume they're all man-made. Um, I was told that not necessarily all man-made, but indirectly, yes, because of the fact of the weather weapons and things like that, but it is truly a shortage because California is in a desperate situation. I think it's 60% of our, our produce comes from California, but now we're buying it out of Mexico as a result of what's happening in California, things of that nature. So prepare the best you can and love your family. Spend time with your family, and um, but especially spend time with the Lord. 
uh, because death is nothing but sets us free in the first place. You know, we know where we're going when that time comes. And, you know, and if God lays it upon your heart, uh, pray for us. We certainly could use your prayers. Uh, and we will be praying for you as well. I'm Steve Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News.